Cheers is filmed before a live studio audience. He's pinned by Hulk Hogan. One, two, three. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man, that Hulk Hogan is amazing, isn't it? But he, the thing is fixed. Oh, that's too bad. Hulk Hogan can't have children. <laughs> Hot dog! What's that? They just delivered my new mattress. Finally, a decent night's rest. Now, all I gotta do is figure out what to do with my old mattress. Any suggestions? Well, mine's in the Smithsonian. <laughs> oh, will they send a truck? <laughs> Stout yeoman. Well, oh, you're in a good mood, Dr. Crane. And why shouldn't I be? Next week marks the anniversary of the day my beloved Lilith and I first met. Oh, uh, kidding. Yeah, as a show of my affection, I bought her a Louis Couture's armoire at a little uh, antique shop I saw on the hill today. Set me back quite a penny, but you know, I think when you're trying to express your affection for your mate, Old Wood says it best. What do I say? <laughs> I was talking about the armoire. Well, I never say that. I don't even know what an armoire is. It's a large chest. Well, hey, what woman wouldn't want that? So, you're going to live together. Why? Talk to me. Uh, well, Sam said we should get to know each other better before we got married, and, and we thought this might be the best way. Mm-hmm. But I think you've forgotten something. The reason Joyce came to Boston in the first place? College. <laughs> that was my mom's idea. I decided I'm not going to college. <laughs> not, not going to college? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. Oh, you must listen to me. You, you have your whole life ahead of you. You can't throw it away like this. If you don't go to college, you can't earn a living. And, and without a job, what will you do when he leaves you with a litter of kids? <laughs> and, and you have to sell them, one after another, just to put food on your pathetic little table. And in the end, you'll be left with nothing. Nothing but worn out hips and sagging breasts. <laughs> Is that really what you want? Well, I can't speak for Joyce, but I could do without that. <laughs> Norman, why waste time with the supervisor? He'll only take credit for the idea himself. Why don't you go right to the top? Present your idea to the board of directors. I don't know. The, the thought of standing there in a room full of bigwigs just gives me the cold sweats. Boy, yeah, I can sympathize with you there, Normie. Yeah? Yeah, I'll never forget my first oral report. Sixth grade? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, was I nervous, I tell you. I went to my father and he said, hey, just relax. You'll be fine as long as you can imagine the other kids in their underwear, which is no big deal for me because I've gotten that far of half the girls in class already. <laughs> Anyway, I was uh, just describing how they make maple syrup by draining the sap from the trees when I happened to look down and notice how nicely Cindy Van Rippen had filled out. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> well, what happened next? Uh, well, I, uh, I smiled at her and she smiled at me and then after my little speech, we stole a few moments in the cloakroom. No, oh, I mean, after they drained the sap from the tree. <laughs> Something the matter, Carl? Yeah, something's the matter. My life is the pit. Seems like good things happen to everybody except me, you know? Norm has a new job. Frazier actually seems happy since he met his creepy girlfriend. And Sam has given up women and decided to marry Diane. <laughs> what have I got? Zip! What do you, I mean, how do you keep such a sunny disposition in this rotten, stink-infested world? You mean, what do I do when I see Mr. Blues peeking around the corner? God, even has a cute name for depression. Well, I just close my eyes and I think a happy thought. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> what was your thought? I'm glad I'm not you. I just give me a beer. Come right up. Sam around? What didn't you hear? No. 
Sam sold the bar to some big corporation, oh. bought a boat. He's sailing around the world with it. Hey, well, good for Sam. Thought he was supposed to get married. Well, Miss Chambers went off to write her book. I mean, that didn't work out. Last we heard, she was out in Hollywood trying to write for TV. <laughs> she hung up the phone and said, Cliff, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, my husband's come back. Wait a minute, uh, she's married all this time and never told you? Yeah, seems that her husband, a true and gallant soldier of these United States, was uh, lost and presumed dead during some uh, secret mission out there in the Far East. <laughs> well, as it turns out, he was only wounded. You know, although he suffered uh, years of tortures, he, uh, uh, somehow he managed to uh, dig a tunnel with a pair of chopsticks and <laughs> make his way to a uh, payphone and uh, give her a call. <laughs> Look, this is an unbelievable story. Oh, yes, yeah, Sammy. It's unbelievable with me now. I was here. But uh, she barely had time to blow me a kiss and wish me a happy life, and uh, she was gone. Like a dream of the night. What a maroon. I, I guess we were like a pair of lovers that were never meant to be. Like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Red, Scarlet, Heathcliff, Kathy. Heathcliff and Kathy, isn't that three people, Mr. Clayton? <laughs>